when the factories first began to send their pall of smoke over the cities, and farmlands in the east offered only the barest living, Americans turned their faces toward the west. They poured into the new territories by thousands, bringing their household goods, fording the mighty rivers and climbing the mountains, fighting Indians and outlaws, praying, toiling, dying. It was a hard land, a hostile land. Only the strong survived, a new American breed, the pioneer. In this forge, upon this anvil, was hammered out a man who became a legend, a man who hated thievery and oppression. His face masked, his true name unknown, he thundered across the West upon a silver white stallion, appearing out of nowhere to strike down injustice or outlawry, and then vanishing as mysteriously as he came. His sign was a silver bullet. His name was the Lone Ranger. Boundary markers. Ah, that Indian reservation, Kimasami. Taboo for white man. We can't go any further. Come on. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Don't worry about this mask. It's on the side of the law. Sure. Anyway, you won't get much. All I got is one small herd, and them Redskins sure cut it up. You catch up with them? Them go on to reservation. We're not able to follow. Like every time. Does this happen often? Mister, they come across that boundary line as soon as they run out of meat. Only this time I saw them. But they saw me too. He must have a, you notice something strange about Indians? Yes, Tonto. They all had saddles. Why not? They do enough stealing around here. You excuse the word. Wouldn't want to insult a couple of fellas that just saved my life. Well, I told you I'm not a bandit. But if you'd like to be grateful, you won't talk about seeing us. We'd appreciate that. Easiest thing I do is keep my mouth shut. Good. We'll use my horse. Give me a hand with the saddle. Excuse me, mister. You better take cover for the next couple of days. We got a sheriff in Brazada who means it. Well, why only for the next few days? Well, some real high muckety-mucks coming out this way. Might make Sheriff Kimberly sort of uh, edgy. 
How high? Governor of this territory, that's how high. Coming to visit the Kilgore Ranch, and that's a special place for you to keep clear of. You wouldn't like the climate. Thanks. Governor, I'm Reese Kilgore. Delighted, Mr. Kilgore. Hope you had no trouble on the road. <laughs> Were we really in danger from Indians, Mr. Kilgore? My secretary, Mr. Clive, thinks you warned us about that just to put spice into the journey. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're safe, Governor, and that's all that matters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Governor, may I present Mr. Abernathy, President of the Bank of Prasada? Your Excellency. Delighted, sir. Uh, this is Reverend Purdy, Mr. Beecham, Dr. Bailey, Joe Branch, Bob Benson, this is our Sheriff Kimberly. You carry a name highly respected out here, Sheriff. Thank you, Governor. John Muller, Bureau of Indian Affairs. We must have a talk, Excuse Mr. me, Governor. Here's a man you have to meet. Chip Walker, first white man to set foot in the territory. Well, I'm delighted. Proud to meet you, sir. <laughs> I expected to find you a much older man, Mr. Kilgore. Oh, why? I don't know. I suppose because of your position in these parts, your wealth, influence. Well, out here, Governor, you have to get a pretty fast start. You see, in these parts, your chances of growing old may not always be too good. <laughs> Governor, allow me to present Mrs. Kilgore. Governor, it's a real pleasure. And my you. daughter, Lila. A real Westerner, born here, raised here, and able to prove it. <laughs> How do you do, Miss Lila? How do you do? All right, ladies and gentlemen, here he is. The man who's doing the most to make this territory a state in the Union. Our territorial governor. <laughs> When Mr. Kilgore graciously invited me to his ranch for some hunting, I gladly accepted the opportunity to renew my acquaintance with this great territory of ours. I know we have certain problems. Once again, Indians and white men are watching each other over their gun sights. We must put an end to that. We must establish reason, justice, and peace. Because only then can I stand before the Congress in Washington and say what I say to you now. This territory must and shall become a state. I continue to press for statehood along with the others, Governor, but it's only because I don't want to discourage them. Frankly, I just can't see our being granted statehood. Not for so long as Indian troubles keep us looking like a raw frontier. Mr. Kilgore, we have a denial from Mr. Muller, the Indian agent. What does Muller know about it? Red Hawk's young men come climbing down off that reservation any night they please. They steal calves, broncos, anything they can lay their hands on. Well, is there any evidence to prove these charges? Well, Mr. Clive, when a man finds one of his best calves butchered out on the range, and the best parts of it cut away, and only moccasin tracks around it, that's evidence. Governor, the reservation is too close to town. Up to now, they've only killed our cattle. But what if they start in on us again? These people can't see why they can't move these Indians further north to another reservation. But Mr. Kilgore, we've signed a peace treaty with them. They've broken it, Governor. Come in, Cassidy. Governor, this is my foreman, Cassidy. Good evening. Found mountain lion tracks over at Cottonwood Springs. Fresh trail? About an hour old. Well, there you are, sir. Didn't I promise you some good hunting? We've got a big cat. I want to go, too. <coughs> no, Lila. Reese, you wouldn't let her go. Well, it, it's just that she's such a little girl. We'll start before daybreak. Not this time, little bit. In a year or two, maybe. I brought Mrs. Kilgore here out from the east. She still hasn't quite been able to get used to us. You see, back east, you wouldn't be wearing pants. You'd learn to curtsy and to embroider, and you'd no more think of letting the sun touch your face than you'd handle the business end of a branding iron. 
I'm going to brand a calf this round up. You are, huh? <laughs> I've got a big outfit here, Governor. You've only seen a corner of it. And this is the youngster who someday is going to be able to run it. I'm raising her to be equal to the job. before the governor. Go to bed. I know how bitter you are about me, how disappointed. But why can't we try to make the best of it? I'm doing that. Are you? Staring for hours every evening at a mountain you can't have, bringing up Lila the way you Will do. Will you please go to bed? Reese, you can't make a boy of her. It may be what you wanted. But it's not what we have. I think I know what I'm doing. And so do I. Now look, it isn't our fault you're unhappy here. Lots of people are happy. You just don't fit. You hate the smell of animals, the smell of leather, the wind, the Indians, everything you see. Talk about being afraid. What aren't you afraid of? You make me afraid. Oh, no. You brought it out here with you under a pretty face and a lot of airs. And you want a hand in raising the only child we can have. Could you put a colt on its feet if it fell down? You couldn't even outsmart a digger Indian. Well, I'm training her to handle what I leave her. And I'm telling you for the last time not to interfere. Hmm? It's time I told you. My coming out here to go hunting is purely a cover-up. Sir? I accepted Kilgore's invitation because it would enable me to meet a certain man. What man? When were these arrangements made? Governor, I should handle these things for you, for your protection. Keep your voice down. Clive, different problems require different measures. This region is a hotbed of trouble, and to think of forms... But, Governor, don't you realize it may be dangerous? Nevertheless, I have my work to do. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to slip off from the hunting party. I want you to see to it that no one comes looking for me. I must meet this man, Clive. And I must meet him on his own terms. Yes, sir. Good morning, Padre. We are honored, Your Excellency. It is I who am honored. Has he arrived? The sun is truly hot today. Would you like to rest in our library? What sort of person is he, Padre? You must know him well. Only you were able to arrange this. We do not have a great many books, but in a library there's always something of interest. <laughs> Sorry, I expected to meet somebody else in here. Nobody here but me. Guess the governor's mansion's a long way from Indian country. You live out here, governor, you gotta be able to read sign fast and sure. A silver bullet. Yep, that's my credentials. The, the sign of the Lone Ranger. That's right. Why isn't he here? Must we have all this mystery? I'm the governor. I need his help. You gotta do your talking through me, governor. That's why I'm here. Set. Take a load off your spine. Like the feller says, sometimes polishing your britches gets you further than blistering your feet. <laughs> Pretty good, eh? <laughs> I'm here because I felt the ranger was the only man I could trust to give me a fair, impartial report on what's causing the trouble out here. Looks like you had friends of plenty when you come to the Kilgore Range. How's a politician to know who's telling him the truth? Uh, it may well be that Kilgore's solution is the only one possible. Move Red Hawk and his people away from any contact with the ranchers. Settle them on another reservation. Just means breaking another promise to them engines. That ought to come easy by now. I have a feeling there's more to this situation than just friction between white and Indian. Might be! But, Governor, 
This is a rich territory. Rich for a white man, rich for Indian. Sometimes a fella forgets the goodies he has in his own pockets and uh, does a little snooping into another fella's. Could be some of that going on. Whatever it is, I cannot come before the Congress and plead for statehood until it's cleared up. Tell that to the Ranger. Yep, I'll tell him. I must be able to show the Congress a territory at peace with itself, ready to join the Union. This territory isn't ready now. Governor, you're as right as rain. Well, adios. -y. Looks like a fine horse. Ah, very fine. I'd like to buy him. Him belong to friend. I'd pay a good price. My friend not sell him. Money has been known to change a man's mind. Ah, him not like other horses. One time him fight buffalo, kill buffalo. But him hurt bad, maybe die. Kimo Sabe find him, not let him die. Long time now, them be friend. Kimo Sabe? Ah, that my friend. Indian word mean trusty scout. Him named Silver. Silver? The Lone Ranger's horse. How are you, Governor? Well, sir, I'm glad to see you. I've been telling my troubles to that somewhat quaint friend of yours in there. Huh. Quaint friend? It isn't what a man looks like on the outside. It's what he has in his heart. Why, you're the old prospector. That's right. But why? Governor, I learned a long time ago, it's wise to know a man before you place any trust in him. But then you won't mind my asking a few questions. Of course not. Let me tell you a brief story. It's about my brother. He was one of the finest men that ever lived. We are rangers in the same company. He was a captain. Then one day, we are ambushed by outlaws, shot down like cattle in a pen. Tano happened along, found me with still a spark of life. We've been riding together ever since. But why the mask? Governor, outlaws live in a lonesome world, a world of fear. Fear the mysterious. I made this mask from my dead brother's clothing. I've worked from behind it ever since. I'll wear this mask until justice has been dealt to the last murderer and outlaw. I hope that answers your questions. It does. Thank you. Goodbye, sir. Wait. When can I expect to hear from you? When there's no longer any trouble around here, or when there's too much. I think you'd better get back to the ranch. I'm sure Mr. Kilgore will be waiting for you. Adios! Red brother. Red Hawk, you know that Tonto and I ride for justice, for peace with honor between the white man and Red. I will not listen to anything but the truth. We not steal cattle. Arrows found in cattle. Indians have been seen riding horses with saddles. Young braves not break treaty. Oh. Oh. Braves are angry, Red Hawk. Perhaps they do these things and their chief does not know. Them know how Red Hawk punish. Better die quick than be punished for break treaty. Them angry because white men talk with two tongue. Make treaty. Promise not go on reservation. Not go near Spirit Mountain, but he go. Spirits of Indian God rest on mountain. 
Then say not come on mountain, not break sleep. If break sleep, all go in fire. Why should the white man break this taboo? The ranchers wouldn't dishonor their treaty just to go hunting. Have you seen them, Red Hawk? Who saw them if Indians cannot go close? Him see in medicine. Strong medicine tell. If this medicine man can see who dares to ride on Spirit Mountain, let his magic tell us who raids the ranchers, steals their horses and cattle. We wish to know these things. We do not want war. Red Hawk, not understand white man way of peace. Maybe better fight. Maybe Red Hawk, him fight one last time. the same thing as a year ago. We need extra hands for the roundup and drive to Abilene. Who likes Mr. Kilgore's money? Monty Stewart. Spanish Charlie. This town must be getting deep. I set him hard for Reese Kilgore. If any of you got a case against him or me, holler out and I'll hear it. Looks like we ain't so popular, Cassidy. They don't speak up, I'll pick the ones I want. Slim, I'll take you. Larry, I'll need you on a chuck wagon. Knuckles, I got a long memory. I'm working for the Circle O. You can quit. Go tell him and get your bedroll. You, Buck Simpson. I'll go. Now, that's what I like to hear. Ramirez, you've been wiped out by the Indians. How about a job? I'll go. You need a job that bad, I'll make you my deputy. I can't ask my girl to marry me on deputy's pay. It'll do till you can get started again. She's waited for me long enough. Cassidy, you've been having more brushes with the Indians than anybody else. This time, drive your herd around the reservation, not across. Are you loco? Could be, but I'm wearing the star. Well, pin it on your britches, you're busting out of them. <laughs> we drive across that reservation to save 100 miles. It's trespassing. That's sure what it's called. The Congress of the United States granted those lands to the Indians. The Bureau of Indian Affairs intends to see to it that the grant is honored. You stay just like you are, Sheriff. Honest, hardworking, and golden pure. Take that off me. Whenever you get to feeling bigoty, just remember it was our outfit that let you be elected. That tin star you're wearing is for other folks, not us. Freeze! Uh, guess I got kind of excited. Never did go for these fandangled six-shooters. Always going off unexpectedly. Yes, sir. Uh, kind of makes a, a man nervous, especially an old man. You man, get your gear and show up at the ranch pronto. Do the figure eight again. In my head. All right, all right, Lila. Come here, dear. Man, that's wonderful. That's wonderful, boy. Let's give him a little breather now, huh? I think he's tired. Raise them like boys, they'll be boys. Well, things are in pretty good shape over there. I still can't get over that Indian agent and that tin badge trying to tell me where to drive cattle. Sheriff told you what to do, do it. 
You mean take them all the way around the reservation? Yes. Why them cow's bones will be sticking through their hides? Cassidy, it's only a few pounds of beef. You know what you're supposed to pick up for me at Abilene. You bring that back. Then if you want to risk an Indian arrow or a sheriff's bullet, take your pay and make your own orders. Well, you don't have to holler so they can hear you over there. Well, then do as you're told. You stay on this side of the reservation. And remember, the only reason you're ramrodding this drive is to pick up that stuff from me at Abilene. Now get the cows on the trail. Move them. Yeah, let's go. That's Kilgore stuck. You better get your rope off of him. I called him to give us a chance to talk, Ramirez. He said to call on you any time I needed a favor. You after somebody around here? I'm after information. Can't tell yet whether I'll find it here or on the trail with the Kilgore herd. But if there's any trouble, it'll be Cassidy who starts it. When he ain't pulling somebody around, he ain't living. That's why I want somebody watching them all the time. Someone I can trust to tell me everything that happens on the drive. Like what kind of thing? Now, let's say anything unusual. Like Indian ponies wearing saddles. That's one of the reasons I want to stay in this area. I want to find those Indians and have a talk with them. Where will I meet you when I come back? There's a cave above the road about a mile south of town. I know the place. I'll be there. spread a sure a pumpkin seed outfit. Why, the sheriff's old man don't have but a hundred head in the whole place. Mix them in with ours. It's already been taken care of. Keep your eye open for old man Kimberly. Oh, man, Kimberly, now. You sure are scratching the wind. Keep the cattle moving. Hey, you! Where are you going to them cattle? Hey! Now, hold on. Hold on. You got my cattle in that herd. Well, it's the sheriff's old man. How are you, Kimberly? Got my cattle out of that herd and get off my ring. Your cattle? Yes, my cattle. Now, why would we want to be taking your cattle? We might want to come this way again sometime. Why, you lying rustlers, there's some of my brand right there. Hold it, old man. That crazy old coot riding smack into the herd like that.
blankets, three rifles, saddle. And then there's this. Lucky Mr. Kilgore ordered by mail. Gave me time to order. We don't get no call for it around here. No use for it. We have. Powder, keep the boys rounded up. We're heading back as soon as we paint the town a bit. Now nah, you're talking. I got enough red paint saved up in me to cover the town of Chicago. Kilgore wants us and this stuff back in Brasada right away. All of us? Those I don't need, I'll pay off. How about Pete Ramirez? Now, uh, I don't mean to pry, but if there's something exciting going on down your way, I'd sure appreciate you. Gee, Ruslan! You tired of living? Don't you know what's under here? Well, what do we aim to do with that stuff? If I told you fellas everything I know, you'd be as smart as I am. You looking for me, Ramirez? Now, uh, that's the latest style in the catalog. You a married man? Got a girl. You get her that and you'll be married. She'll make you marry just to have a chance to wear it. How much? Two dollars even. by a different road, Kimazami. It's possible, Taro. Kilgore must have been mighty anxious for news to ride out to meet him. Me have idea, Kimazami. You stay. Maybe Ramirez come. Me ride to Brazada. Maybe learn many things. Try to get there before Kilgore. Ah, be careful. satisfied with starting the stampede that killed your father. On the way back from Abilene, my boys found his house and everything else burned to the ground. Not a horse, not a cow anywhere. What proof do you have they were Indians? You wouldn't believe an Indian was bad if he scalped you. You'd say it was cooler that way. Where is Pete Ramirez? Why isn't he telling me this? What's he hiding for? Well, Ramirez, isn't he the one who quit in Abilene? Yeah, Coles. Come to me and said he wanted to be paid off. Pete was to be married. Well, that's it. Mr. Kilgore, when the Bureau of Indian Affairs sent me out on this job, they gave me just one piece of advice. They said, remember, it's the white man who does the pushing. Only the white man has anything to gain. How does that apply to me, Muller? Well, I just thought I'd point out, in case you'd missed it, that most of the feeling against the Indians is being stirred up by the reports of your hired hands. I'm gonna bust you. Oh, wait just a minute. Now, look here. I stand by my men. When you accuse them, you're accusing me. You and your men are a reckless, gun-happy lot. No, no, let's talk about me, Muller, about my problem. 
because now I'm beginning to see what it is. You don't care what the Indians do. How we ranchers suffer. You're for them. Well, they're in the right, I certainly... And since you and Kimberly are closer than fleas on a dog, I guess that explains why no posse of yours ever caught a single redskin. We could never find enough evidence. Sure, sure, I know. Well, I won't wonder about it anymore. All right, Sheriff. If you can't protect this county, the ranchers will. Look at that. There's plenty of golf for you. Now they even come into town wearing guns. Throw him back on the reservation. of slugs in this thing. You see who helped him to get away? A masked man, a road agent. You're playing on the wrong side, Kimberly. That's funny coming in from you. My side's the law. That might have been the same Indian who was responsible for the death of your father. I had that in mind. It's what kind of slowed me down. Now, maybe you better slow down, too, Mr. Kilgore. You're burning with rope fever. You're a fool, Kimberly. We ain't arguing that. I'm a peace officer. And this badge says nobody white eye Indian gets strung up unless a proper judge and jury says to. Now, you get on back to your ranch. 
Ride the whole gang of you! So help me, I won't give any of you time to draw. How's your throat, Tom? It feel better. That plenty close call, Kimai Sabi. Too close. Cassidy said Ramirez decided to stay around Abilene. Him only say he asked for pay. Couldn't have happened that way. If Ramirez decided not to come back, he must have had a mighty strong reason. Him not quit Kimisabi. Him have girl here. Say him going to marry her. I'd better ride to Abilene. You go to Chief Red Hawk. Make that your headquarters and do some scouting around. I may do that, Kimisabi. Tano, keep out of trouble. Trouble will find Tonto even when him not look for it. do you? There was a Kilgore outfit up here a while ago. This fellow, Pete Ramirez, he was one of the cowpunchers. Sure you haven't seen him? Uh-uh. You're sure a Gabby one. Well, thanks for the information. <laughs> <laughs> down at the Drover's Hotel along about that time, and Phineas Tripp, he's a general store man, he says that he saw the Corpus Delicti with a Kilgore outfit. Kilgore outfit? Uh-huh. Thanks a lot, Marshal. Good day. You sure you don't know him? Nice-looking young fella. Black curly hair. Has a few head of cattle. His name is Pete. Pete Ramirez. Ramirez. Sure, that was his name, now you mention it. Buried in Boot Hill. Why'd anyone want to kill my young friend Pete? You sure it was him? Sure, I'm sure. Cassidy was checking over the supply, and the cowpuncher come to the door, and Cassidy says to him, you looking for me, Ramirez? Yeah? What happened then? Nothing. He just looked at the stuff for a second, then he bought a hat for his girl, and he went out. Looked at what for a second? Well, nothing. What kind of nothing? What was this here Cassidy fellow buying? Supplies, I told you. Now, I'm a busy man. You said supplies and the stuff. What do you mean by the stuff? That's between me and Mr. Kilgore. Don't come in here asking about personal questions of my customers. Now, go on, get out. Mister, if a young fella bought a hat for his best girl, don't you reckon he'd aim to go where she was? I said get. All right, I'm getting. No use getting mad about it. Keep a civil tongue in your head. That's no way to talk to an old man. <laughs> Don't 
Don't shoot. Please, mister. There was an old prospector in your store today. I didn't tell him anything, so help me. Why not? Well, I don't know anything. You don't know who killed Pete Ramirez? No, I don't. You sure? I don't know who killed him. Then what could you have told that old prospector but didn't? All right. How about the dynamite? Dynamite? There. He got it out of me. If Cassidy sent you to find out if he could, tell him I never asked to handle the Galdarn stuff. Mr. Kilgore ordered it. Why can't he order things like that right there in his own town? Right there in Brasada? What's all the big secret about? Drums are summoning the tribes to war. That plenty bad, Kimisabe. Ranchers talk war all time. Indians make ready. Soon war start, and they fight, fight. Not if we can stop them. Spirit Mountain talk, Kimisabe. Say many die. Spirit Mountain talk. Medicine man say, Tonto here. Uh, you heard thunder, Tonto. Sun shine like now, Kimisabe. It must have been thunder. Medicine men may believe that mountains can speak, but we know. Wait a minute. Cassidy picked up dynamite and Abilene. That makes same noise, Kimisami. Like thunder, but not thunder. Why should he buy it in Abilene? Why take the risk of transporting it all the way back? Kilgore could have bought it in Bursada. Maybe Cassidy buy it. Kilgore not know. No, Kilgore signed the order. He wanted the purchase kept a secret. So much of a secret that Ramirez may have died for uncovered. What do here? You go, white man. Him friend of Indian. Go, white man, Indian friend. White man, Indian fight. There must be no more talk of fighting. Not true. Much talk make warrior weak. Red Hawk, talk all time. Angry horse, not talk. Greetings, Red Hawk. You have called me friend many times, though my friend Red Hawk promised to keep the peace until I can do certain things. I must have time. If I have that time, I promise there will be no fighting. Angry horse, him say make war. Him say fight now. Show white man Indian strong, can kill many. Angry horse wishes to be chief of your tribe. Many young braves him friends. Red hawk old, sick, but very wise. Red Hawk knows what will happen to his people if war should come. If war come, Red Hawk be Indian. Not can be white man. Not can be alone. Red Hawk be Indian. Make strong fight.
going on here? You don't need that gun, Sheriff. I'm sure this will explain. Show him, Toto. So that's it. This isn't the first time that white men have disguised themselves as Indians to stir up trouble or to start a war. Sure. Now I can see who they are. Curly. Idaho. Pasco. Skinner. Whose idea was it? Yours, Cassidy, Kilgore? They won't talk, Sheriff. We've tried. But they're Kilgore men. I went to Abilene and learned a few things. Ramirez didn't quit. He was killed. Pete Ramirez? I think if it wasn't an Indian who started the stampede that killed your father, it was this kind of an Indian, a Kilgore man. What now, Sheriff? I'm going to see Mr. Kilgore. You'll be gunned down. I'll take that chance. This is no time to throw away your badge. It's the time to wear it. What good's a badge in this town? Can I make up a posse and go after him? He owns a town and everybody in it. Who will be the prosecutor against Kilgore? Who will be the judge? Who will be the jury? And what do you aim to do with these buzzards? They'll be out of here by morning. I'm going to keep them out of town until we need them. You can't go after personal revenge now, Sheriff. There's an Indian war due to break at any moment. And you say what to do. We've got to expose Kilgore and Cassidy as troublemakers and place them behind bars. That'll give us enough time to get evidence to convict them. But we'll need a federal warrant and a federal marshal to serve it. Washington's a long way off. The governor is much closer. Just show him the silver bullet. What if the fighting should cut loose while I'm gone? The way things are now, I'll only take one shot to start him off. I'll see that that shot isn't fired. You just get to the governor. Somehow I'll keep the ranchers and Indians apart. Good luck, Sheriff. It's come at last. The Indians are gathering for war. Pack some things for Lila. I'm sending her away until this is over. Reese, it isn't safe out there. A lot worse here. She's to go at all. Now's the time. Reese, anything can happen out on that road. Welcome. Will you please pack her things? Pack only her things? You're not going. A woman's place is with her husband. Why am I not going? I think you wouldn't be on the outside for one minute before you'd be blabbing to everybody in creation about certain things that have happened around here. Just now, I don't think that would be so good for me. And you also think that this house is the more dangerous place. Well, now I know exactly where I stand. Always remember the way I told you to go. Don't change anything. Lila, Lila, wait. I want you to wear this. Mommy, that's your very best. Oh, baby. Why do I have to go? Why can't I stay here if there's going to be excitement? Because I know it's best for all of us. All right, boys, go ahead.
Hang me, horse! Spoken of everywhere. Red Hawk is a sick man. An angry horse who wishes to become chief. Shows his strength by making war on children. Ah, the birds talk of it. The animals in the forest laugh at Angry Horse. Is Red Hawk so weak that Angry Horse can do as he wishes? Or is Angry Horse obeying Red Hawk's commands? Red Hawk, not like bring white child here. And why do you keep her here? Let me take her away. Red Hawk, no more tell what do. Red Hawk old, no more fight. Angry Horse, not old. Better Angry Horse be chief. Always the young buffalo wishes to kill the old buffalo and take his place. And he does kill the old buffalo because he has youth and strength. But has he the wisdom to lead the herd? To keep it out of danger? I say Angry Horse has not the wisdom. He cannot be the chief of a tribe that wishes to live in peace. I will fight Angry Horse to prove he is not worthy. <laughs> this white child must belong to the winner. <laughs> A squaw can fight with weapons. <laughs> Chief must be strong in heart, in his hands. I do not need weapons to fight men who make war on children. Once again, call me friend.
Artie, you shake your hoof up to the circle O. Oscar Joe Branch's place. Dave, Bob Rinson's. That takes care of the ranchers. Powder, take four or five of the boys into town, knock on all the doors. Tell them what's busted loose. Right. No, not Powder. I want him and Goss to come with us. Us, but I thought we... Ask questions. Fresno, you take the town. Now, let's get it straight, boys. We all meet at Pilgrim's Crossing. We ride from there to the reservation together. Nobody rides ahead. Now, listen. We can't go in there shooting the way I'd like to. First, we've got to find out what they've done with my little girl. And if she's still alive, how to get her away from them. And once that's settled, we do a job that's been put off too long. And that means wherever you see a redskin, pour it in. All right, boys, ride. <laughs> by way of Spirit Mountain. That's a long way around. We'll make it worthwhile. We're gonna pick up some dynamite. All the guns and rode away. Oh, Daddy. I thought you were. Don't ever be afraid of him. He's my friend. Lila. He's an outlaw. Not an outlaw, Mrs. Kilgore. Please believe your daughter. I am a friend. Angry Horse wanted to kill me. He wouldn't let him. And then he made all the Indians promise not to fight, no matter what. They'll have to fight. They've no choice. My husband's men are gathering the ranchers right now to lead them to the reservation. Gathering where? At Pilgrim Crossing. Lila, I know how brave you are. Are you too tired to go on being brave? What do we have to do? Mrs. Kilgore, if your husband makes that attack, no ranch in this territory will be safe. It's best if the both of you go to the mission church. It's a long run. Not easy. Certainly not easy for you, Mrs. Kilgore. I'll survive. Oh, you just depend on me. If anything happens... If anything happens, I'll protect you. And it's about time. You hurry and pack your things. I can't ask a wife to inform on her husband. But if there's anything you can tell me, anything that'll help prevent this war, please let me know. He doesn't deserve any loyalty. Not from me or, or Lila. I can tell you this. He won't stop when he knows that she's safe. His intentions right along were to exterminate the Indians, and he plans to do it now. But why? I don't know. Does he want their land? That was only at first. He would sit for hours, looking off at Spirit Mountain, thinking about the vast acres around it. And it made him angry that a, a thing within the reach of his eyes should belong to someone else, to Indians. You say that was only at first. What is it now? The mountain. He wants to own Spirit Mountain. But why does he need the dynamite? He's blasting up there. The Indians hear it and think the mountain is talking. Perhaps he's closing up the passages that he and Cassidy found. They, if he plans to put cattle on that land, they, they might wander into some of those old tunnels. The ancient tunnels of Spirit Mountain. I heard about them when I was a boy. The Indians don't trespass on Spirit Mountain. But Reese and Cassidy do. And that's where they are right now.
ranchers are doing just as we feared. They're gathering now for a strike at the Indian village. Now that plenty band, Kimazemi. Kilgore has gone to Spirit Mountain for dynamite. I'm going after him, Tano. You take Mrs. Kilgore and her daughter to the mission church. Then follow me. crazy mule, that's what I want to know. Anything happens, whoever's close to him don't stand a chance. And it ain't gonna be me. Get back to the ranch and pack your gear. You're fired. You can't fire me, Kilgore. I'm working for what's in there. And you try and fire me from that. Church. What are you, a renegade? A bandit? What kind of man are you, sides with the Indians against his own people? What's your grudge against me? I'm taking you in for murder, Kilgore. For the murder of Ramirez and Sheriff Kimberly's father. And now go! <laughs>
Anybody here? Yep. The only way we can get at them right now is through that pass. All right, let's go through it. They'll know before we reach them. Now, look, if we're going to let blood, we got to be prepared to smell it. Now, let's go. Hold it, Kilgore. This won't get your girl out of there alive. Here's what we do. Me and my boy sneak in there at night and look around. Maybe we even get her free from them. And then we jump them in the dark. You're not looking for a fight. I am. All right, let's go. How many men at Pilgrim Crossing? Me not stop count, but see many. Red Hawk not have many gun. We don't want any gunplay. There mustn't be a fight. Tonto. Pure silver. Look like mountain, all silver. So that's why the mountain's taboo. The legends were begun to keep people away. And that's what Kilgore found out. Him be plenty rich man if he owned this. He'd be a king in this territory, Tato. That's why he stands in the way of statehood. This whole territory would become his dooryard. He would found a dynasty. A dynasty of silver. But this belonged to Indian. And he has to get rid of them before he can seize it. And that's just what he's trying to do. Take him, Tonto. Good boy, Silver. This pack mule belongs to Kilgore. What we do about Kilgore? Him have many men and many gun. Here's something that can be worth more than a hundred men. <laughs> We haven't got any choice. All right, we're gonna move in. Now don't miss.
sheriff now, paid by Kilgore money. I'm a United States Marshal, appointed through the governor's office, and backed up by Lieutenant Crayley here and his men. And I'm telling you men to get off this reservation. You're violating a federal law. You're trespassing. And if a single Indian is killed, you'll all stand trial for murder. They're holding my daughter in that village. Your daughter's at the Mission Church, and I'll bet you know it. We spoke to her, Mr. Kilgore, to her and to your wife. And what about my three men they killed when they kidnapped Lila? That can be handled without resorting to war. I think we know better out here how to handle the Indians. Are we going to stand for this outside interference? I say no! You can't say anything, Mr. Kilgore. I'm carrying a federal warrant for the arrest of you and Cassidy. Arrest? Are you crazy? It says both your names here. The governor figured you wouldn't believe it. That's why he sent along... Kimberly, you'd better not be making a mistake. This is Reese Kilgore. Right. That's his gun hand, Cassidy. And among the things they're charged with, there's the murder of Pete Ramirez. Why, you murder and lie. You told me Ramirez quit. You can scratch my name off that warrant. I'm not responsible for the private feuds of men who happen to work for me. Right. Hold your fire. I want that man alive. Kilgore. Kilgore is dead. And that's it. First Ramirez, now Kilgore. He'll pay. Tano, these weeks of rest have done her good. Hello. You're looking very well. You were so right to insist we stay here until the trial. It's over, Mrs. Kilgore. It wasn't much of a trial once Cassie decided to talk, though talking didn't save his neck. But you told me I might have to testify. Well, I figured this would be the best place for you. Yes. The Padre has been so good to us. Such lazy people who come to visit me. They do nothing but sleep and eat. As for the little one, she forgets her fear and hatred of the Indian and plays games again. Ah, we're a little one now, Padre. Come, I show you. As you predicted, there was a problem. She had been trained by her father to walk in his ways. She had his strength, but she was learning to imitate his weaknesses. And she's my little girl again. <laughs> we're not going east. We're staying to manage the ranch. She loves it here. And I'm going to learn to love it too. And together, We'll make the Kilgore name a good one. Wait! But I wanted him to stay. I wanted to thank him. When his work is finished, he rides away. But I wanted to see his face, to ask his name. You cannot see his face. He will wear the mask until there is no longer any need for it. And his name is the Lone Ranger. Ah! 